I survived 100 days on a jungle island in the middle of the ocean with very limited resources. Over the next 100 days, I'll be transforming this mess of trees, leaves, and bamboo into a cozy little farm with an epic basement. If you do enjoy this video, please consider subscribing and dropping a like because it helps me out more than you think. I began day zero by taking in the view of the island that I'd be spending the next like 17 hours on before punching my first tree, turning the wood into planks and sticks, then making a pickaxe and instantly digging down for cobblestone so I could give myself some stone tools. While I was down there I found a vein of coal, then I went back up to the surface, crafted myself up a pickaxe, axe, sword, and shovel, then threw my wooden pickaxe into the ocean because I would not be needing it anymore. Next, I decided to be a lumberjack and chop down one of the few mega jungle trees on the island, almost breaking my axe and getting just under two stacks of logs. Then I took a look inside the jungle temple where I spotted a creeper and decided I don't really want to die today, so I left. I noticed that there are also two sheep living on the island, which could be a really easy way to get a bed and also food eventually. So since shears require two pieces of iron, I hit the mines once again, finding an underwater cave swimming down into it, realizing I was running out of breath and crafting a door so that I could basically breathe underwater infinitely. While down there, I mined a few iron veins and also discovering a massive underwater cave, which I decided to skip for now because I was really only there for iron. And then I went up to the surface, noticing it was nighttime and hearing a bunch of mobs, so I just went back into my hidey hole where I made a furnace, smelted my iron, and while I was waiting for more iron, I made myself a bigger home base so it wasn't too cramped in there. Finally, I made a sword, a pickaxe, and shears, and I made my way up to the top, realizing there was basically World War III going on with all these mobs, so I quickly went to look for the sheep, the first one only giving me one piece of wool, while the second one gave me three, which was just enough for me to make a bed. On my way back there was a couple really close calls and also I was really having trouble finding my way back into the mine. But I barely made it back and somehow this creeper blew up when I was not even up there. And since there was monsters nearby I couldn't sleep so I had to move my bed all the way down to like almost the underwater cave. But the game let me sleep that time so it was fine. I woke up on the morning of day one to inspect the creeper damage. And I noticed that there was a ton of zombies, so I had to be careful what I was doing. So I patched up the creeper hole the best I could before some zombies went and attacked me, almost killing me in the process. I ended up losing my sprint, so I retreated back down to my little hidey hole so I could eat some zombie flesh. I made my way back up, realizing I should probably just make myself a shield so I could defend myself at least a little bit. So I took on two skeletons at once, only to take more damage, but at least I hit this sick pre-fire. Also, I tried to hit this nasty 360, uh, but yeah, I kind of just ended up embarrassing myself. Next, I realized it was probably going to be a good idea to start a wheat farm early on so I wouldn't starve to death. And also, I'd be able to breed my sheep together, so I punched all of the grass I could find. Also finding pumpkins for later, but I don't even think I ever used them. For the future, I knew I would need a water bucket for the farm, so I went down to the mine, crafted one of those, also making a new axe and hoe, and wasted no time getting water. Then I cleared some of the land, starting to hoe the ground, only to realize you can't even hoe Podzel, so I had to manually break it and replace it with dirt, which was a little bit tedious, but I didn't really mind. I tried to 360 this zombie, only to get absolutely punished instantly, setting me on fire, putting me to half a heart, and then there was just this random skeleton chilling down there, which I barely escaped because his arrow couldn't reach me, making that the closest call yet, and keeping me at half a heart until I got more food. So I got back to it, hoeing all the ground that I could, placing down all the seeds I had on me, and even punching more of the grass on the island so I could get as much wheat as I possibly could. That lasted until sunset, which I went to sleep instantly because I didn't want to deal with 20 mobs outside my door. On day two, I decided to craft up bone meal to speed up the wheat growth process so that I could make bread and also breed the sheep. I allowed myself to make one piece of bread, giving the rest to the animals. I also crafted up some fences to start the sheep pen, and then went out to gather both of the sheep. This process took a surprisingly large amount of time because look at this sheep. He's literally just jumping up and down for no reason. Anyways, I made my way back up to the farm, and I got sniped by a skeleton. This is precisely why I don't play hardcore. So I got my revenge, and then I went to gather up the sheep again. 
This time, the other sheep was giving me a hard time. I'm telling you, there's something up with the sheep's AI and water because they would just not follow me. I ended up just putting them in a boat and then bringing them to the island that way. So, after like 5 minutes of trying to get them in the right place, I finally got them into the pen and braided them up. Next, I decided to make some chests because for some reason I hadn't done that till now. Then I was realizing I was running really low on resources, so I hit the mines once again, finding some coal, iron, copper, and then some clay, which meant there was a lush cave nearby. So I dug all around the clay, breaking my shovel, and then finding the world's smallest lush cave, leaving me extremely confused, but um, I made my way back up to the surface after a mostly successful mining trip. Noticing it was nighttime and then going straight to bed. I woke up on day three fighting off mobs because for some reason I hadn't lit up the place yet, and this baby zombie got some really nasty hits on me, causing me to lose even more hearts. But I was able to gather some wheat to make bread so I could regenerate some of the health at least. Then I noticed that there seemed to be a panda that identified as a sheep. So I left him alone for now and afterwards, killing mobs leaving me at one heart yet again. So I made some bone meal out of the bones to speed up the process of wheat again, giving me even more bread. After crafting up some shiny new tools, I noticed that there was an azalea tree, which if you didn't know leads to a lush cave, and I wanted to go find an actual one this time, while also getting as much rooted dirt as I possibly could because the block looks really nice, I can't even lie. So I dug as much of this stuff as I possibly could, also finding some iron and eventually an actual lush cave. Who would have guessed? I gathered up all of the resources I could find, getting a lot of moss because I would also eventually use that as a building block. And here's the final inventory of all the items that I got. By the time I arrived to the surface, it was already day 5 and I was greeted by these kind zombies that were just trying to kill me. This baby zombie almost actually did and I got stuck on this piece of bamboo. I even tried to hide on this tree but uh, I couldn't really sit there forever so I just kinda ran and hoped he died by the sun, which he did. I finally thought it was time to get rid of all the mobs and light up the whole place, but uh, I got extremely distracted super fast by this jungle temple. Going inside, fighting a skeleton only to get blown up from behind. So I left because I didn't want to die for the second time in this world. Noticing this time there was a creeper that decided he wants to identify as a sheep, so I made a bow and accidentally shot one of the sheep, so I decided that I needed a new and much riskier approach of using an axe, which if I messed up I would have lost the sheep forever, but luckily I pulled it off. Since I was still low in health I harvested some wheat, breeding up the sheep once again, as well as crafting myself three beautiful loaves of bread. Also I had some seeds left over in my inventory, so I decided I should tame one of the local parrots, naming him Gerald, the protector of sheep. Uh, just kind of because he sits by the sheep. Anyways, I then made myself a ton of torches because I was really sick of all these mobs spawning at night. Like, it was actually so annoying at this point. So, this time I placed them all over the island, making sure I wouldn't get distracted. Also, I did some side quests, like smelting iron from the lush caves I got. And also taking the leaves from the azalea tree because I really like how that block looks. But it was getting dark outside so I went into my cave and slept away the night. I forgot to record the start of this but on day 6 I trapped a zombie villager in a boat so that I could maybe turn him back into a normal villager. I didn't think I would actually use him but uh, I thought it would be nice to have him anyway. I also dropped him down several blocks because I didn't want to hear zombie noises all day when I was around the area. After that I took my iron out of the furnace and finally went ahead and made myself some iron armor. And with that armor came a new level of confidence so I built up the courage to explore the jungle temple once and for all. Inside I took out a skeleton and slowly killed this creeper, then finding my first diamond in a chest. But that was pretty much all I found because the other chest was kinda garbage. At the end of the day, I expanded the sheep pen so it wouldn't be too cramped in there, so I gave the sheep and pandas a little bit more room before heading to bed. When I woke up, I realized there was three pandas in the sheep pen now. I truly don't even know how they got there. So I decided the pen wasn't big enough for all of them and turned it into two different fenced off areas, one for sheep and one for the pandas. I also cleared out a lot of the nearby area because I was really sick of all the random leaves and trees and bamboo scattered around the place. I did a little bit of terraforming as well and deleting all of the disgusting pods all around the base, which this lasted pretty much the full day. And taking a final look at what I've done that day, I was pretty happy with the outcome. I got straight back to it spending all of day eight chopping down trees, taking down bamboo, 
terraforming the island, and deleting Ponzel. It was honestly a pretty boring day, but I was listening to music, so the day went by pretty fast for me. In the morning, I started by chopping down a tree, then noticing there was a parrot flying down in front of me, so of course I had to tame him, naming him Timothy, who decided to identify as a panda this time. Anyways, I got back to doing terraforming and also some chores, including harvesting wheat, breeding sheep, and making bread, then going back to replacing pods on the island and placing more dirt. I also began to think about taking down the entire jungle temple because I really didn't like how it looked and it was in the general area where I wanted to actually build my house. So I kind of just slept on the idea of putting it off to another day. On day 10, I saw that I was running really low on ores, so I went back down to the giant underwater cave, finding and catching an axolotl, naming her Lucy. After that, I found a beautiful vein of diamonds, almost mining it with a stone pickaxe, but luckily I found another big lush cave where I took some of the moss for later, and also finding some iron making an iron pickaxe. While I was down there, I also found two veins of diamonds, which was really nice. The first one being a pretty small amount, and the second one being pretty solid. I also found an absolutely massive cave connected to that place, but I made the decision to come back later because it was a little overwhelming. On my way back home, I went to get those diamonds diamonds from earlier, then made my way back up to the surface, marking the entrance to the underwater cave with cobblestone, then I went straight to bed. Day 11 was a pretty boring day, doing all my daily tasks like getting wheat, breeding sheep, harvesting pumpkins, then I went and cleared out one of the ugliest parts of the whole island, which was just a lot of trees, bamboo, and those ran on like stumps at the ground with leaves on them, I don't even know what those are called. And I did a lot of dirt placing and terraforming, turning the island into a shape that I actually liked. Also replacing all of the pods that I could find. This, yet again, took the entire day, which I really don't mind because it's kind of relaxing and it's a change of pace from mining all day, so I'm, I'm okay with it. The next morning, I decided it was finally time to take down the jungle temple because I wanted to eventually build there, so I started off from the top, soon realizing it was going incredibly slow, so I upgraded my pickaxe diamond to go a little bit faster, and I spent pretty much all day and some of the night demolishing the temple, then breaking dirt, and then placing dirt so it wasn't too ugly. Here's the final look at what I did that day, and I was pretty happy with it. The next few days of Minecraft were just a lot of terraforming, replacing Podzol, placing dirt, all that jazz, and it was literally just a lot of repetition, so I'm not going to bore you too hard with all the details, but just know the island was looking a lot better by the time I was finished. On day 16, I began my very first building project on the island, experimenting with a lot of different blocks, starting with oak logs, cobble and bamboo, then trying out jungle planks and jungle logs and bamboo planks for the roof, putting some of it back a block, and then finally, after a full day of messing around with different blocks, I had my general block palette ready to go. The next day I decided where I wanted to build and started laying out the structure with some moss because it's super easy to break and I had a lot of it. In this build I really wanted to push my abilities by building on an angle and in a really unnatural shape. I'm a really big fan of building kind of wonky on purpose because it adds character and life to a build rather than keeping it symmetrical and perfect. And while I was building, I changed around a lot of blocks because I really didn't like how the planks looked on the main building. So I eventually took them out of the main house, but they're, they're going to be there for a little bit. I decided to just build the tower out of jungle planks and strip logs so that the main part of the house could be separate from it. And after taking out the planks from the main house, I was a lot happier with how the build was looking. I also experimented a lot with the roof shape, making it triangular, trying out the bamboo plank stairs, realizing it didn't really look that good, so I replaced them with slabs which also took a long time to get the shape right but after a long day of just messing around I was finally really happy with the outcome. It was kind of just a little semicircle which I was really happy with. On day 19 I started to try adding in mossy cobblestone for texturing alongside moss and bamboo blocks and it ended up looking really cool so I added it all over the building and after that I completed the roof which consisted of kind of a mix between bamboo blocks and slabs which I was incredibly happy with so I decided that I was going to try and do the same type of building style for the roofs of all of the buildings around the area. In the morning, I changed out the blocks right below the roof so it showed the bottom texture of the bamboo blocks. Then I worked on the roof of the tower starting off with bamboo plank stairs then kind of just winging it for the rest of it. Using the same mix between bamboo blocks and slabs 
and then finally coming in with this interesting top of the roof with fences on each side. So I liked what I saw, but I wanted to add a little bit more final touches to the tower. So on the corners, I added some jungle fences and that turned it from being a kind of rectangular shape to more of a cylinder shape, which I liked a lot. Next, I realized I should probably get some windows in the house. So I did the good old door trick, getting a healthy amount of sand in the water smelting it up and while I was waiting for that I changed out the floor of the house using the chiseled bamboo planks that's a hard word to say then I placed down a door as well as all the glass and glass panes in the house plus the tower and taking one final look before going to bed I started off on day 22 by placing in new chests inside the house as well as moving all of the old chests organizing them into sections of wood plants stone and valuables which took pretty much the whole day. Also, I moved my bed and furnaces to the corner of the house and adding two little chests to fill the space. After getting out of bed, I cut down a few of the trees around the area, then decided to make a diamond sword and go exploring the lush caves again. Down there, I got a ton of moss for building blocks, and then I went out and found probably the most diamonds I've ever found in one session. Like, it literally looks like I'm cheating, but... I can't really prove it, so you're just gonna have to take my word on it. I did get a little bit of other resources like iron, and also I found this little baby slime, so I got a slime ball out of that. But the highlight of the trip was obviously the diamonds that I got. So after finally making my way back up to the surface from almost three days of mining, here's the final material haul with a whopping 37 diamonds. I don't even blame you if you think I'm cheating. But yeah, then I smelted up the iron and completed my diamond tool set, making myself a diamond axe. On day 26, I started on my second build of the island, which is a little shelter and a pen for all the sheep to stay in. I started with bamboo pillars and then made the back with a mix of bamboo blocks and planks. I really wasn't sure what I was doing during this, but I was kind of just going off a reference image of some random animal shed I found online, and it ended up turning out exactly how I imagined. So anyways, I took out the ground and replaced most of it with some of the rooted dirt I got from before. And then I worked on the roof, which I struggled with for a little bit, mainly because I wanted to have a nice subtle slant, but I didn't really know how to use only slabs to do that, so I just had to use trial and error to figure it out. Next, I worked on the fences, which I would later change, but for now I built some of it too tall instead of one, and then the rest was just normal and then adding some fence gates. After replacing some of the grass with rooted dirt, I harvested some wheat and began moving the sheep into their new home. This was a little annoying just because there were so many of them and I kept accidentally letting some of them out. And since I didn't really like how many there were, I just ended up killing all of the ones that escaped. And then a large portion of the ones that were in the pen. After that, I finally changed the one side of the ugly fence to make it one block tall. And then I added some bushes around the area to make it look nice. And finally, I removed the old sheep pen and replaced the hole with dirt. For the rest of day 28, I bone mealed some azalea trees so I could harvest the leaves until a thunderstorm started and zombies spawned, so I just went straight to bed. In the morning, I decided to start on one of the many custom trees on the island. This was pretty experimental because I wasn't entirely sure what kind of wood I wanted and if I wanted to use slabs or not, but I started on the leaves before deciding whether or not I actually wanted to change the wood or not. And of course, after taking a step back, I decided I wanted to change it to jungle wood since um, I am on a jungle island after all. On day 30, I started on the next mini project, which was to give the pandas a new home. So I moved them over to a temporary pen first before just kind of randomly pr placing blocks. Like I didn't really know what I was doing. I didn't have a plan for this, but I think I wanted to make like some sort of dome looking structure using bamboo blocks, moss, uh, and azalea leaves. But I ended up hating it so much that I just tore it all down and started over again. So I slept on the idea again, and this time I went with a very similar design to the sheep pen, starting with bamboo pillars, planning out how I wanted the roof to slant, then laying out the back, messing around with the shape a lot, because I, I didn't really have a plan at all during this. Um, and then all that was left was the roof, which you've seen this before, and I just kind of sped it up. I used the exact same technique as before. And then finally I added the fences and the fence gates, and then some bushes, and finally I... I uh, moved all the pandas into their new home.
on day 32 I cleared out some bamboo and started working on a new windmill farmhouse build since I wanted a new place to put all the wheat since I just destroyed the last field. Um, so I went with a base of cobblestone and then transitioned into mossy cobblestone to moss and eventually bamboo blocks in like a cylinder looking shape. I also added a little balcony kind of thing all around the middle of the windmill using bamboo plank slabs and trap doors to create a little walkway. Then the next day I worked on the roof which I didn't have an exact plan but I went with a dome shape with bamboo plank stairs and slabs and I ended up actually being really happy with it. After that I started on the actual windmill thing. I don't even know what it's called but I messed around with uh, the shape for a little like honestly for like a full day using wool and fences and I think it turned out pretty good but I've never really built a windmill before so I'm not exactly sure how good it looks I also changed out the floor with some regular oak planks and added two bamboo doors to the corner and finally at the end of the day I built a second floor to the build so you can actually uh, access the balcony so I made like a little platform and then added some ladders up to it in the morning, I destroyed the rest of the wheat field so I can make a couple new uh, fields next to the windmill. I started with a barrier of leaves to act as like a fence and a guide for how I wanted to actually make the fields. And after I was happy with the shape, I added all the wheat seeds. And next, I started on the path using rooted dirt and jungle slabs to smooth out the inclines of the island. And I wanted this path to go all around the major parts of the island, so I got to work tearing out a ton of grass and then going back to replace it with rooted dirt. So taking a step back, this is how it pretty much looks all around the island, and I was really happy with it. I noticed that after taking out the old wheat field that the space felt really empty, so I decided that it would be a great place to put a little pond. So I started with a cobble outline um, and then tore out the grass, replacing the perimeter with cobblestone again. And then I went around placing slabs so it wasn't too flat. And then for texturing, I, I changed some of the uh, cobblestone for mossy cobblestone. And as the sun was going down, I placed the rest of the slabs and some cobble walls in the pond and then replaced the dirt floor with some mossy cobble went to sleep and then went right back to work <laughs> filled the rest of the floor in with normal moss to make it look like a like some algae almost and then finally i added in all the water making sure all the slabs and walls were waterlogged um, and then i went around and added a few little details like azalea leaves and a few sticks of bamboo Next, I wanted to add another custom tree into another empty space next to the windmill, making an interesting shape with the logs, and then adding leaves in a style that I've used for years now, making it almost look like a willow tree with like droopy leaves at the bottom, I guess. And I think it works really well with Minecraft, um, but that's just me. On day 38, I realized I should probably get rid of this giant eyesore of a jungle tree that was blocking the view of the entire island. And in, in its place, I wanted to make another couple fields, so I added flowering azalea leaves in a certain, like a, almost a circular shape with gaps through the middle um, for a pathway to walk through. Um, so I used rooted dirt for the pathway, of course, and I dug out some areas for water, hoed all the grass, and just as the sun was setting, I planted all of the wheat uh, seeds into the new field. After sleeping the night away, I made another custom tree with the exact same process as, as the others. Uh, so I won't bore you too much with the details. Um, but yeah, yeah, it turned out really good as well. Then to make the island look a bit nicer, I used up some of the bone meal I had um, to put grass all over. So I broke all the flowers and the tall grass um, so it wasn't too ugly. But uh, yeah, I think it also added a lot uh, more detail to the island, which is really nice. The next day, I started working on a new path that goes down from the new wheat field garden thing uh, down to the sea level. So I brought um, a lot more of the flowering azalea because I think it looks great. So I'm probably going to use more of that uh, later. And I continued to bring down the path using rooted dirt and jungle slabs like before. And I really like the curve that I managed to make with it. And so when I got to the bottom, I extended the dirt even further into the ocean because I wanted it to feel like there was a lot more room to walk 
because there literally was none before. While I was down there, I realized the island really needed like better terraforming and more details, so I decided to take a break from the path, and I wanted to add some new custom rocks to the area to break up all the random dirt and grass around the area. So I used a mixture of cobblestone and mossy cobblestone along with the slabs of, of those same blocks. And I think they really improve the look of the island and definitely adds way more than before. So here's the final look of the front, which I definitely need to add a lot more. <laughs> Anyways, on day 41, I went back and started on a dock that connects to the pathway from before. So I built some beams that go all the way down to sea level and then bring jungle slabs into the walkway, raising up the beams one block, then putting slabs on the top of those. And finally, bring in the fences um, on the side that I would later change out for gates. Next, I wanted to go back and add even more natural elements to the island, so I started off with a couple rocks off to the side, and then adding another one of those jungle willow tree thingies, which all turned out quite well, if I do say so myself. The next day, the game decided to rain on me, but it didn't stop me from working outside. I set it off by adding patches of moss to the area um, around the custom rocks to add a little bit more variety to the shoreline since it was mostly just cobblestone and grass. And then I went around and placed a ton of dirt all around the island because I really wasn't a fan of the, how steep the edges were. So I definitely smoothed, smoothed it out a lot better, and by the end of the day, I finished off by building a nice little rock next to the tree um, before heading to bed. After waking up, I went right back down to the dock area, replaced the fences with fence gates since I wanted um, boats to be accessible from the dock. Um, so with that idea in mind, I decided to build a little boat uh, made purely of just oak planks and like the, the variants of that, like the stairs and slabs, of course. I have no idea what kind of boat this actually is, but um, if someone knows, let me know. Um, but I kind of just came into this uh, build thinking this was going to be some kind of sailboat. And then it kind of turned more into a rowboat, almost. And then I added a roofed area um, that some boats have. Um, so I, I, I couldn't tell you what kind of boat this is, but I, I do think it looks pretty nice. I could have probably used... Um, different blocks other than oak wood, but I ended off the build with a couple of barrels and some other blocks to detail it And I think it looked really nice and at the end of day 44 I constructed another tree and you've seen this like five times already, so I won't talk about it, but it, Once again, it looked nice <laughs> You wouldn't be able to guess what I did in the morning. Yep. I built yet another tree uh there's a lot of blank spaces on the island that I noticed, and they're too small for a building and too big for, like, a, a big grassy area. So I just ended up building a lot of trees and rocks around the island, and I'm, it definitely filled up the space really well. So I did that pretty much all around the island this day. I made a lot of progress on the rock population. I think I made, like, six this day, so that was pretty good. I also extended the path uh, to go all the way around the back of the animal area using, of course, rooted dirt and the the, what are you, the jungle, I can't, I can't think, the jungle slabs, oh my god. Um, yeah, that looked really nice, of course. That, that area you don't really see too much, so I didn't add like a ton of stuff. Anyways, I ended off the day by chopping down the last remaining giant jungle tree on the island. And I won't really miss it because I think it looks kind of ugly, to be honest with you. And in the morning, I realized that the the space it left was pretty empty. So I went and added yet another custom willow tree. Who would have guessed? And this time, it was the biggest one yet, which was probably the best looking one, too, by far. Um, and I'm pretty sure it took all day, so... Uh, I guess it took me 10 minutes to build a tree, so I, I, that says a lot about my building speed. On day 47, I wanted to add some extra details, so I added a few pieces of bamboo around the area. And then after that, I decided to start on a new little project on the opposite side of the island, um, which is a little mining cave, so I can easily access the lush caves underground. So I started texturing the place, adding cobblestone and mossy cobblestone, with slabs and stuff, 
and then I dug out the area making it look like almost like a natural cave and then after that I started digging out the actual mine which I, I didn't even bother making it look natural I just kind of made it more like man-made looking and I had to dig down probably like 80 blocks or something like that which took a large amount of time I will tell you that Especially since like halfway through I ran into an underwater cave and I had to place a bunch of cobblestone to remove the water and then I had to break it all. <laughs> it just took so long, dude. I also ran into the wrong lush cave. Like I literally found another one. And I, I thought it was the right one, but I realized I had to dig down even further. So I finally made it to the right one. And on day 49, to temporarily make it easier to go up and down the mine, I crafted up some cobblestone stairs and I placed them down as fast as I possibly could. And I definitely didn't misplace them like 12 times. Anyways, I went back down to the cave to explore the area and light the place up. And I rediscovered the huge cave I came across on day 10, which this time I was actually ready to explore it. So using my handy dandy water bucket, um, I made my way down and it wasn't long before I found my first diamonds down there which I'm pretty sure I found before but I just never went down there and yeah I, I lost that diamond we don't talk about that and while I was down there I grabbed some obsidian because I knew I wanted to get an enchantment table eventually let me just say this was another unintentional really successful mining trip for diamonds and iron uh, mostly diamonds though I don't know why I wrote that on my notes anyways I found another 24 diamonds while I was down there. So, since 24 diamonds is exactly the amount you need to make full diamond armor, uh, that's exactly what I did, and it definitely increased my chances of survival. Also, I'm going to try to remember um, to put the seed on screen or in the description or something, so uh, if you do think I'm cheating, you can just check the caves yourself, uh, because this seed is actually insane for some reason. Anyways, I also found a zombie spawner while I was down there, but I didn't actually intend to use it for XP or anything like that. So I just took the loot and then went back home to the surface and smelted up all of the ores that I got from the caves. Next, I went back to the caves to place down a minecart track to make the trips up and down the mine faster and more fun. Initially, I only meant uh, for the track to go downwards because I didn't think I'd have enough power rails at the time to get all the way back up um, but I eventually did end up getting more and as you can see I actually ended up having to change out a lot of the normal rails for powered rails um, so I literally didn't even have enough um, to get like halfway and after crafting up even more rails it wasn't enough so I went down to the lush caves to gather the gold that I was still missing uh, for powered rails then I smelted it all up and made myself enough rails to boost me all the way up to the top. On day 54, I decided to go on my first and last journey away from the island because I really wanted books to be able to make an enchantment table. I needed the enchantment table. Um, I needed the enchants to speed up the next project I was planning, uh, which will come very soon. But on the way, I stumbled upon some sea pickles on the ocean floor that I thought would look pretty good in, like, the pond or something. So I took, like, 30 of them, which is, like, almost every single one. <laughs> I don't know why I thought I would need that much. And finally, I arrived at more land, which took a very surprising amount of time to find. But I took some sugar cane while I was there because I thought I would need it for books. But then I found a village, and inside said village... I found a library, which I didn't even know existed in desert villages until now, uh, but it gave me a really good amount of books, and so after that successful trip, I traveled right back home because I was really eager to start my new project. This new project required a secret entrance, making use of a sticky piston I got from the jungle temple. Now, why do I need a secret entrance if I'm on a single player world? I don't know. But I got to digging the great basement, soon realizing the progress was going pretty slow with the unenchanted pickaxe. So I crafted up an enchantment table and placed all of the bookshelves on the second floor of the windmill. Then getting a really good pickaxe for only 16 levels, 
And then I also made another diamond pickaxe so I could combine the two um, to get efficiency 3, unbreaking 2, and silk touch on a diamond pickaxe, which was exactly what I needed for this project. And about the next three and a half days were spent just carving out this cool basement with interesting shapes and pillars. I really had no idea what I was doing, but the end product I came up with was actually pretty good. On day 61, I went back down to the lush caves because I remembered there was a geode down there, which you can find calcite and smooth basalt in, which were the blocks I chose to use for the floor of the basement. I also went and mined a bunch of obsidian because the main reason I wanted the basement was so that I could have like a cool place to put a nether portal, so I needed a lot of obsidian for that. So after gathering 30 pieces of obsidian, I got distracted by yet another geode, which of course I gathered more calcite and basalt from. Then I made my way back home, repaired my pickaxe with some spare diamonds, and then dug out the blocks uh, for the nether portal. I hopped into the nether to check the spawn, realizing it was absolutely atrocious. Like, it doesn't get much worse than this, I'm, I'm telling you. Anyways, I needed to go exploring through the nether because I needed a singular piece of soul sand so that I could make a water bubble elevator to get back up from the basement to the surface. And man, this was a challenge, but after many minutes, I found some. <laughs> When I got back home, I gathered some kelp because it makes all the water into source blocks, which if you add soul sand to the bottom, it makes a nice elevator. And after testing it out, it worked flawlessly, of course. I'm a genius. After that, I went back down to the caves because I was going to need a lot of moss for the walls of the basement. So I used up an entire iron hoe and got enough moss for the build. On the morning of day 64, I worked on the block palette and gradient I would be using for the walls of the basement and got straight to work mining out the entrance and placing in the moss. And I'm pretty sure I forgot to record or something, but I guess I finished the walls of the entrance, which looked pretty nice uh, with the stone bricks, stairs, and floor I was placing. Uh, but yeah, I don't know what that was about. I also placed down water at the bottom of the entrance so I wouldn't have to take fall damage every time I fell down the hole. Then I expanded more of the walls. This time I actually showed the process which I made a gradient going kind of randomly from moss to mossy cobblestone to mossy stone bricks and then to regular stone bricks. And I think it fits perfectly with the theme of the island. Next I tore out the rest of the floor and placed down all the calcite and smooth basalt in a checkered pattern making the place look extremely fancy and this took the rest of day 65. When I got out of bed I started mining out the ceiling of the place which was kind of annoying because it was really high up and I needed to build temporary scaffolding made of moss so that I could actually reach it all and I replaced it all with some beautiful stone brick of course. I realized that I didn't know how to feel about the fact that you have to jump into water and get yourself wet just to get into the basement so I replaced it with hay bales with carpet on top because hay bales reduce the amount of fall damage you take so basically instead of getting wet you just sprain your ankle a little bit um, so I think that was better. <laughs> The next big task that I was procrastinating on was the rest of the walls, so for the next day of Minecraft was spent building the gradient using the same blocks that I will once again recite to you in case you forgot them. <clears throat> moss, mossy cobblestone, mossy stone brick, and uh, I can't speak that fast, stone bricks, and also stone, like just regular stone, I forgot about that. Anyways, on day 69, I started designing the two pillars that I've been neglecting this whole time. Uh, and I wanted to use deep slate, even though looking back, it doesn't really fit the stone walls all that much, but I don't care. I made this cool design using deep slate bricks uh, that go into stairs and then walls with bamboo blocks as like the backdrop. And I also added in water to add some more color to it. And by the end of the day, I finished the full pillar and was satisfied with the results. The next day I tried putting in sea pickles at the bottom of the pillar water to add some extra lights, but it ended up not giving off nearly enough light that I wanted, so I hopped in the nether in search for some glowstone, and with my handy dandy silk touch pickaxe I got more than enough lights to bring home. So I got to placing them in, and they were definitely the right choice because they made the place much brighter. 
For the rest of the night, I spent building the second pillar, copying the exact same design I used on the other one. And yeah, this place is looking pretty cool, I gotta say. But I wasn't finished with the build yet because I haven't even added the coolest part in yet. I wanted to add tons of fish tanks all over the walls and eventually even one in the floors. And so I got to work first mining out all of the four of these like little window things and placing in more of the calcite since I had so much of it and mossy cobblestone for the floor. On day 72 I jumped into the ocean because I needed a pretty decent amount of sand for glass. Then I caught the first two fish of the aquarium naming them Jimothy and Gertrude because I thought that uh, you, you needed to name fish or they'll despawn but it turns out that was a lie. Anyways I started constructing the first enclosure using regular glass blocks. Realized I wanted more fish per tank so I went out and snagged a few more from the ocean. Got mining fatigue from this random nearby ocean monument and then found a coral reef which I was actually looking for because I could take the coral with my silk touch pickaxe and I absolutely demolished like 1% of this entire coral reef. In the morning I started detailing the first tank using a variety of different coral fans, then sea pickles, sea grass, and another fish. The second tank wasn't much different, I think I only changed like some kelp instead of the sea grass to change it up a tiny bit. I added a few more fish and then I caught some more fish which I gotta say it's a super underrated feature. I actually had a lot of fun finding the different tropical fish throughout the process so I highly recommend. Anyway, here's a totally legit non-edited speedrun of filling up the remaining two tanks and I'm gonna continue yapping throughout this because I, I think it would be complete silence for like 14 seconds if I didn't. Okay, now we're done. Yo, that's crazy. I finished the window tank thingies. Now I wanted to do these bigger thingies on the side and fill them up with axolotls. So I went down to the lush caves in search for all the different colors. Oh yeah, and I also found more diamonds, believe it or not. Uh, so that was fun. I literally had more diamonds than I knew what to do with. Anyways, I found uh, three different colored ones in the same pool. But I only had two buckets, so I got two dudes. Bred them together because I think the plan was to get two of each color. Now this was when it started getting annoying. No matter what I did, I literally couldn't find any more axolotls. Like, I literally had to go back up to the surface to get out of render distance probably like five times because nothing was spawning oh yeah here's the yellow one and then at this point of the search i was so down bad that i looked up at the ceiling and i found this water dropping down so i was like uh, it doesn't hurt to just check this and this is how i found the last dude and i think in total it took me around 30 minutes just to find four different colors of axolotls so after that experience i was finally ready to get started on the tank i mined out a chunk of the stone Realizing I was running pretty low on calcite and basalt, so I made a day trip down to the local geode. And then on day 82, I installed a mossy cobblestone floor. Then for the walls, I made this interesting gradient going from diorite to calcite, sprinkling in some polished diorite in between. And I also decided on smooth basalt for the ceiling. And of course, I had to speed run the second axolotl tank. Next, I brought in the water and started messing around with coral, using the actual coral blocks this time since I had more room to work with, uh, and then added the kelp and the coral fans, which turned out a lot better than I thought for some reason. Finally, I added the group of axolotls in. This tank had two of both pink and cyan colors. So, here's the final tank. Okay, speedrun of day 84 because it was pretty much the exact same process. Oh yeah, and this time I added the brown and yellow axolotls. The next morning I realized that it felt like the ceiling had something missing to it, and my solution was to add depth to it and add some color. So I raised a section up one block, placed in some of the moss and then slabs to make the transition smoother. And after a full day of designing this build and also gathering deep slate, um, I added a chandelier. <laughs> yep, this took 10 minutes to make or design I guess I thought it looked cool next up was the final fish tank uh, it was going in the floor so I made a circular shape and while I was digging down I brought down the checkered pattern from the floor design and I thought it actually looked really good so I just kept it can't forget the mossy cobblestone floor then the water and then all the aquatic plants or whatever the sea pickles coral blocks ground coral wall coral kelp 
more sea pickles, more wall coral, and bone meal. Days 88 and 89 consisted of placing in all the fish, but I had to get more fish because I didn't think I had enough, so that's why it probably took so long. And I also decided not to add in the fish catching part because it's kind of boring and you've probably seen it like 10 times. But hey, here's the final look of the fish tank. I hope you like it because I like it. The chests were getting really ugly and unorganized, so I took my time bringing them up to the house to be organized in new chests in preparation for the final job I had on the island, which was to terraform and to make the place look much more presentable. To do this, I decided to connect the land to the ocean floor with my abundance of stone I got from digging out the basement. And I think I got uh, this method from Flip on YouTube where you make like a skeleton or a web of blocks to plan out uh, how you want the, the shape to form. So I placed these downward lines a few blocks apart from each other and then I went back and did the ones in between to make it even easier for myself. Oh yeah, also I got more stone because I thought I was going to run out. Uh, I don't even think I did. And I repaired my pickaxe with some diamonds. Then of course I got back to work cleaning up everything, filling in spaces, uh, you know, overall just chilling. I was listening to music and enjoying the last few days of building on the island. So here's what it looks like after the first step of the process. I was genuinely surprised with how much better it looked. Now for the second step, which is to add slabs to make it all smooth and less blocky. Although I did still leave some spots kind of rough and spiky. And I did this all the way around the island, of course. After seeing the island from a distance, I noticed that there was still a pretty big chunk of empty space left. So I filled it with some extra rocks made of cobblestone and mossy cobblestone. And it definitely improved the area a lot. In the afternoon of day 98, I went down to the caves and searched for iron because I wanted to make a bunch of lanterns to replace all the ugly torches I've spammed. And when I got back to the surface, I realized there was actually a chance to get fortune on a pickaxe to get even more iron. So I got fortune one, which isn't a lot, but it definitely made a difference. And I was able to make 40 lanterns, which on day 99, I spent placing them all down on rocks, fences, and tree logs so that I wouldn't have to leave them on the floor like I did with the torches. I also bone mealed a lot of places so it didn't feel too plain, then got rid of the tall grass and the flowers. Next I placed down patches of moss carpet because I had so much of it and I didn't really know what to do with it. And I was also able to add some torches underneath to sneak in some extra lighting. And finally the sun was setting on the last night of the challenge and it happened to be raining which is a little unfortunate but it is what it is. I took a boat ride to get one last view of the island, then made my way onto the dock, back up the stairs, and into my bed to sleep away the night. Hey everybody, if you made it through the whole video, I want to thank you so much for watching. This video took me about three months to make, so coincidentally almost 100 days in real life. Uh, because I'm in college and I don't have a ton of free time. Anyways, I'm planning on putting out tons more videos this year and really prioritizing YouTube because I'm super passionate about it. So let me know what kind of videos you want to see next and please consider subscribing. Okay, love you, bye.